If you use Ecamm Live and don't know absolutely all of the preferences, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and in this video we're just going to be running through all of the different preferences that you have in uh, Ecamm Live and uh, the reason being is that often questions come up in the uh, group and by the group by the way I mean the Ecamm Live Facebook group so uh, just let me hold on a minute and back up. If you are using Ecamm Live and you are not in the Ecamm Live uh, Facebook group then what are you playing at? <laughs> it is uh, such an amazing place full of thousands of people all using Ecamm Live to do awesome things and everybody's willing to share all of their little tips, secrets, uh, all the ways that they get things done and it's uh, it's just a great place to be really full of uh, lovely, supportive, wonderful people uh, all there to help. So uh, definitely if you're not already a member of that community then uh, head on over there and just go to facebook.com slash groups slash Ecamm Live and uh, you'll be in straight away and uh, join the fun. <laughs> so uh, with that said, uh, yeah, let's get back to the uh, preferences and first of all I should probably tell you how to find the preferences. So I'll just come into my demo mode. So here's my Ecamm Live and my scenes. And if you come up to Ecamm Live, there's a quicker way than this, but I'll just show you the menu way first. Uh, you can come down to the Ecamm Live in the menu and then come down to Preferences and click there. And you can also see the hotkey for that is Command Comma, uh, but it is also on the window itself. So just down at the uh, bottom uh, right here of all this sort of stack of little menus or windows that you can open, you can show and hide the system preferences from there as well. So once you've got that open, I've uh, I've actually created another scene, but I haven't made a proper border for it yet. So I hope you'll forgive me. But there you go. <laughs> what do you think about that? It's uh, my face and the system preferences. I don't know whether you'd prefer it without me actually on it, but there you go. You're uh, you're stuck with it now because I've uh, I've done it. So here is the Ecamm Live preferences window. So let's just run through these uh, different sections that we've got all along the top, and let's talk through what they all do. So the first one we're in the general tab is uh, play app sounds. It does actually tell you what these do, but sometimes it might not be entirely clear, uh, although they are pretty, pretty straightforward. So play app sounds. So do you want uh, sounds from different apps and things like that to come through? Uh, <laughs> Right on cue, my uh, iPhone just uh, blinged then. So unfortunately, this cannot stop sounds coming through from external devices. Uh, I honestly didn't plan that, but there you go. Uh, so play app sounds. So that will allow uh, sounds to come through from uh, uh, from the app itself. Uh, so like if you've got comments and things like that coming up on live, live streams, you can uh, deactivate that if you don't want them to be heard. So I have that deactivated. Uh, show animated reactions. So that is when you're actually on a live stream and you've got the comments window. If somebody likes it or hearts it or whatever, then there's a little animation that comes on to sort of draw your attention to the fact that somebody has uh, done something. Uh, keep utility windows in front while live. So uh, the utility windows are all of uh, the little floating panels basically that Ecamm Live has. So your scenes tab and things like that. So you may want those to always be at the front. Uh, I don't actually have that checked. I've never found it a particular problem, but then I've probably just got enough space that everything is is never really covered up anyway. So I deal with that in other ways. But if you are using a smaller monitor, you may want to have that so that you know your scenes tab, for example, or scenes panel <laughs> was always uh, was always on the top. Uh, when returning to live mode with unpublished changes. So this is related to, uh, I don't know if you even know about this, it was added in uh, one of the more recent releases where you can actually go into preview mode, uh, which I should probably make a video about that separately, but uh, that is where when you're actually streaming, you can do some edits to the scene and uh, go into preview mode so that it's it's not actually going out to the uh, the stream, but you can sort of edit the scene on the fly and then you can uh, publish that and then that will make that live. So it's if you want to adjust your scenes while you are actually streaming. So uh, when returning to live mode with unpublished changes, uh, ask. So that's basically if I had sort of gone into preview mode, made some changes and then wanted to return to the uh, scene, would it ask me first to just double check that do I really want to do that? So I have that on because uh, yeah, knowing me, I would probably be halfway through something, accidentally press it and then have something published that I didn't want to be uh, going live yet. So uh, I do have that uh, to say ask, uh, but you can also say uh, publish or revert changes. Next is uh, automatically hide comment overlays after, and then there's a 
period of number of seconds and you can enter whatever you want in there and that is when you're doing a live stream and you've got comments coming in and you can uh, click on them in the comments panel and they will appear in the stream uh, on the on the screen rather and so you can have them auto hide after a certain period of time now I actually don't have this on because sometimes if there's questions coming up you might want to leave them on for longer so I just have that off but you might want to set that to you know 10 seconds something like that if you've uh, got lots of comments coming through and you want to be able to put them up and then just disappear automatically uh, you can do that I also have a button programmed in my stream deck to uh, take the comment off the screen so that's how I deal with that I can just do it manually and uh, I don't really get that many <laughs> comments at the moment maybe a little bit later I might need to worry about this but certainly at the moment not uh, not a big issue for me show Skype's active speaker camera so uh, I have never used Ecamm Live with Skype I've used it a lot with Zoom but never with Ecamm uh, with uh, with Skype I've barely used Skype for years actually but uh, there you go uh, but this is basically so um, if that's toggled on then if you're on a got a Skype call coming into Ecamm Live then just it would bring the active uh, speakers window to the front uh, as opposed to you just sort of selecting who is the uh, which which window is being displayed so uh, that's what that is but I don't know how many people actually use Skype hands up or comment down below if you still use Skype it's uh, not many people I know nobody has ever asked me for a Skype call for in fact no one's asked me for a Skype call for three years so uh, there we go it's all uh, Zoom and FaceTime these days but anyway so the next one is now you may not actually have this because I uh, had a a friend that I was talking about Ecamm Live with and uh, I recommended that they have this toggled on and they said they didn't even have that option and uh, I think it depends on the version of uh, or the, the model of Mac you have so this is a use discrete graphics card for main c uh, screen so um, yeah that's just boost performance by driving the main screen with this uh, extra discrete graphics card so I think later Macs you don't necessarily have this it just depends on how old your machine is uh, check for updates obviously do that frequently although usually when you open Ecamm Live it will tell you if there's an update available uh, and then also you can choose the recordings folder so that is the folder that it just defaults to um, by the way it is always quicker to uh, store to a you know a local hard drive uh, but if you uh, are short of space then you could still have it storing to a local hard drive but there's a little application called Hazel that you can use and I'm going to do a video all about this and when I do I'll remember to come back and link it here because you can have it perform actions so any f uh, files that are saved to a location uh, you could have Hazel sort of clear them up after a day or two and move them somewhere else so if you want to have a really fast uh, speed then you can have it saving to your local drive but then you could just have something like Hazel that clears up all those files and archives them automatically uh, a little bit later so um, I'm going to be upgrading to a Mac Mini I've decided to take the plunge uh, rather than holding out for the 16 inch uh, MacBook Pro M series whenever they decide to release that and uh, that's what I'm going to do I'm basically going to have all the stuff going to the hard drive uh, but then we're going to have a larger external drive and have Hazel just shift everything over to there uh, the day after I've recorded it basically so that's what I'm going to do with that but this is where you you would change the uh, recording folder now the next section is the account section but I'm not going to go into that one because that's got my personal email address in <laughs> so I'll give that one a miss uh, but all it's got in there is basically just for you to be able to update your details so you can go and have a look at that yourself it's pretty self-explanatory there's not much to uh, cover in there in any case uh, the next one along is the stream now because I'm recording some of these will be greyed out uh, but you can change the uh, stream size from either low res sort of 720 uh, 1080p or you can go to 2k 4k uh, so that is where you would change that then you've got the stream shape so you can either have the uh, widescreen which is what we've got here uh, you could have it square if you want to make videos for other platforms maybe Instagram or something like that uh, then you can also change it to uh, the ultra wide so more like the sort of letterbox style with the black and white tops and bottoms uh, or sort of more standard uh, old school not standard old school sort of four by three ratio as well so you can change that ratio in there the uh, frame rate you can change that as well uh, so I've got 30 frames per second but you can change the uh, frame rate so I've got that matching what I've got coming out of my camera uh, but it does go up to 60 frames uh, frames per second uh, just make sure if you're streaming you've got the bandwidth to cope with that then uh, high quality video mode so uh, this one 
uh, broadcast in the higher bit rate, but as it says, this setting may be automatically deactivated if Ecamm Live can't stream fast enough. So I've never had any problem with that as such, but uh, yeah, I always just have that uh, selected. And same with high quality audio. I think that that is just automatically on if that one's toggled on, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, I just have those both on because why wouldn't you want uh, higher quality video and audio? Uh, next is the recording format. So uh, I just have that as MP4. And then we come into the video section. So the default source, um, I have ca camera. Some people prefer to have blank so that that's it. this is basically when you are starting a new scene or creating a new scene. Uh, do you want it to start with a, a completely blank canvas and build something up or start with the camera? Um, I don't know, take your pick on that one. <laughs> Personal preference. Uh, I suppose that thinking about it, blank might even be a bit better. Uh, in fact, why don't we do that? There we go. I've changed my approach live, <laughs> live on this recording. Let's put that as uh, as blank uh, because thinking about it, I suppose I do do more of my things uh, where I'm starting and building something out and rarely have it as just starting with the full on camera, don't I? So I'm teaching myself something here. <laughs> you probably already know this. So there we go. The default transition. I've just always left that as the default because to be honest with you, I'm not really interested in any of these, uh, like anything... Uh, more sort of flashy uh there i tend to just yeah just fade from one scene to another you can actually have it so there's absolutely nothing on so no transition so if i was to go back to the scene it just literally flicks back to it uh or let's have a little look at some of the, these other ones uh white flash so that would go to that and you can see there is a white flash on the screen uh the most ridiculous one which i hope nobody uses is the uh, copier <laughs> So uh, that is just a little bit ridiculous. I'm sure that's just put in there as a joke. Uh, Ripple. There we go. So uh, yeah, I'm not really a big uh, transition fan myself. If I am, I would do them in sort of animated overlays, I guess. So that's that. Uh, fade out when finished. So fade to black when uh, the stream or the broadcast ends or the recording ends. Autoplay video files, I have that on because where I've got videos embedded in the scenes, I usually, the way that I do things, I actually want the, the video to trigger as soon as it goes into the scene. But if you were doing something, for example, I don't know, talking over sporting events or something like that, <laughs> or whatever it may be, you may want to have that switched off so that when you uh, load a scene, maybe you've got some uh, footage queued up, you don't just want it to autoplay when you uh, load up that particular scene. So that's what that is. Uh, show picture in picture above overlays. Uh, well, I definitely don't want to do that because... I mean, this, uh, not this scene, but this scene here, for example, if I come to this one, uh, this is a picture in picture. Uh, and I don't want it to be above the overlay. I want the overlay to be over the uh, the top of it. So um, yeah, definitely I don't want uh, that one to be on. Uh, show picture in picture in new video file and screen sharing scenes. That is um, like if when you have a, a new screen sharing scene or when you have a, a new video scene. So this is coming back to this, this source. Uh, do you want to have a picture in picture uh, as a default? And so I just have that one switched off because I don't necessarily want it like that. Now this one, uh, I've got it toggled off, but I'll have to say that originally I wasn't quite sure exactly what this was for or rather I didn't, didn't have a use for it. So show NDI and siphon titles full screen. So uh, the NDI and siphon title sources uh, will fill the whole window instead of being behind uh, a picture in picture. Now I had got that one, just the default setting is on, uh, but it was uh, Rich Graham who was uh, doing a little test of a, now I forget the original originator of this idea, where you can basically do have a four camera angle uh, uh, video, where you have a uh, 4K, set the size to 4K, and then basically you have four HD uh, video sources coming in, and you record your whole uh, uh, production like that, and then afterwards you can import this into Final Cut or something like that, and then you can crop in to each of those four sort of quadrants, and uh, basically then you've got four different camera sources all recorded in Ecamm Live, uh, and you could sort of switch between them and do your, your sort of final camera switching and production in an external editor, which was a great idea. Uh, um, but one of the sources that Rich was using was uh, NDI, and uh, there was an issue where it was just filling the whole screen and couldn't get it to just fit into uh, one of the quadrants. And I believe that the solution to that was to toggle this one off. So uh, I've toggled it off just in case in the future I ever come to try that myself. Although 
being so averse to editing as I am, I'm not sure I will. But anyway, that's what that's for. <laughs> it's related to NDI uh, titles and them being full screen, but you may not have encountered any issues with this. Uh, disable built-in camera. Yes, obviously, uh, I've got a uh, rather old MacBook Pro and uh, MacBook's cameras are ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing. They've certainly let themselves down and not been on the ball considering what an amazing job they do with the iPhone cameras. Uh, how they could have sort of let the uh, the MacBook cameras languish for so long being so terrible, I don't know. And also, uh, I would never want it coming on because it's coming on at the wrong angle, really. So uh, with my little green screen behind, uh, yeah, there's no no particular circumstances where I would ever want to use the built-in iSight camera on my Mac. So uh, that's why I've just disabled it. Uh, the next section is the audio and the speakers. So you can select the default speakers. I have it going through my uh, Shure MV7 uh, monitor. So the, uh, the headphone output from my uh, microphone. Uh, use echo cancellation. Well, if you're using uh, monitors in ear monitors which really you should be um then you don't really need to worry about this it's only if you're using your uh, your max speakers or some sort of external loud speakers uh, in the room that you would want to use echo cancellation uh broadcast system audio when uh, sh uh she should I start that again <laughs> broadcast system audio <laughs> when in screen sharing mode. Well, it makes sense to want to share the system audio in there because you might be demoing a piece of software or something like that. Um, but you could also have it all the time. I don't see why you would want to do that because then any sort of pings and pongs and things like that might uh, come through onto your production when you're not really sharing anything. So it'll be totally out of context. Or you can share it never. So uh, it never picks up any sound. Next one is automatically mute microphone and guest audio during video playback. So uh, that's if you've got a guest. If you're on the pro plan and you have a, an interviewee come on, uh, then it would mute uh, the microphone and their audio when you're playing a video. Well, I don't necessarily do that because, or I don't do that, obviously, because it's not toggled. <laughs> I don't do that because I don't really play videos and things like that as such. Uh, the only video that I do have playing are on a sort of scene by scene basis. And in there, I've set the uh, mute automatically because it's sort of muted within the scene, if you see what I mean. So, uh, but that is what that is anyway. Uh, mic delay, I don't have any mic delay on here because um, I've never really found the need to uh, with my camera. But I understand that if you're using other ways of getting the uh, the audio in, in fact, you tell me if I need to be doing this. <laughs> if, if anybody can, if anyone can tell me that there should be a bit of a delay, uh, then perhaps there should. But I'm using my uh, Canon EOS 60D 10 year old camera over USB into my uh, Mac. And uh, yeah, I don't think I need to add any particular delay. But uh, I believe with the Elgato capture cards, then some people add a couple of frames uh, to it. So uh, to sort of keep everything all in, in sync. Uh, so that's what that is anyway. Next. Next is map or, uh, input channels one and two to left and right. So this is if you do have actually left and right channels that need to be mapped to the, uh, the sort of stereo. Uh, I've just got uh, my Shure MV7 and I uh, don't need to worry about that. But if you're using, I guess, some other external device, then uh, you might have distinct channels that you do need to map. Um, otherwise, it says all audio input channels will be combined. So basically just go into uh, the both sides, both the left and the right and uh, stereo will not be enabled when the echo cancellation feature is turned on. So if you do have this one turned on, then you won't be able to do that in any case. Next is uh, mute movie sound on speakers. So again, this is if you are playing a movie and you've got speakers, then it will mute it on there. But again, I don't have that. So um, uh, you don't need to worry about that if you are using in-ear monitors. And record isolated audio tracks. Uh, I don't know if you knew this, <laughs> some people don't, but you can uh, actually have when instead of just getting a video output, uh, this isn't on as a default, instead of just getting a file output when you do recording on Ecamm Live, you can actually have it export the uh, audio tracks as well. And that will be the uh, microphone track as one track, uh, any sounds, uh, movie uh, soundtrack and things like that. Those will all be individual tracks. So if you just want to take out the uh, the audio from your mic, for example, and don't want any of the background sound effects or things like that, uh, then that is the way to do it. Um, 
that's a great i'd need to make a video about that i think because it is a great little feature and it's uh hopefully gonna allow me to get back on with my podcast which i've left languishing for myself for a little while uh so um yeah i'll need to get back onto that next is interview mode uh so play ring chime when uh, somebody tries to join your your uh interview your live stream so when you give them give out your link it will play a little sound uh automatically answer guest calls where well, you don't necessarily want to do that you don't like to get the notification and then answer yourself uh just to stop anybody coming in gate crashing <laughs> uh send guests to green room so that puts them in a little waiting area before they actually come into the stream so in case you know you can answer the uh, call and let them in but not actually bring them online out onto the stream until you're absolutely ready uh, turn off audio processing for guests and this is called musician mode so uh, this is what came up in the um, in the group recently about musician mode uh, so this is where it is it's turn off audio processing for guests now this basically will give a better quality of uh, if you turn it off it will give a better quality of sound technically uh, because, but you do need to make sure that they are uh, wearing headphones because it will turn off any noise cancellation that uh, Ecamm Live is trying to do as well uh, and it will use a, um, a higher higher bit rate as well uh, and yeah as I say it can be uh, can cause issues if they're not wearing a, a headset but uh, and it also incidentally says Chrome browser and a desktop computer is required uh, I'm not sure why the desktop computer is required, but there you go. That's what it says. <laughs> I've never noticed that before. Uh, but yeah, it only works in the uh, Chrome browser anyway. Next one, uh, web interface defaults to dark mode. Uh, now, I had that switched on for ages because, uh, well, dark mode is the only way to go, really, isn't it? So I thought I'd just force that upon anyone who wants to come onto my stream. Uh, but there is another reason, which uh, I heard from Doc Rock, which was uh, if you have it on uh, normal mode, then the browser is going to be a more light or white window uh, and so that can you know be quite bright in people's faces and can uh, sort of illuminate them more than perhaps they should be uh, so turning it into dark mode will stop there being this sort of bright light source in front of them so uh, it wasn't just because you want to force your opinions on others this toggle here it was actually for a real reason <laughs> so uh, now I feel justified in, in actually forcing everyone into using dark mode <laughs> so that is what that is uh, guest web interface displays comments for viewer and uh, if Sorry, sorry for your guest and the view account. So, um, yeah, if you don't want them to see what everyone's saying on the stream, it seems a bit cruel, really, but you could toggle that off. Uh, or if you don't want them to know how many people are on the stream, you could turn that one off. But uh, obviously, I just leave it on uh, and they can see the millions that are tuning to my live streams. Uh, <laughs> next one is uh, lower music and movie sound for guests when in off air mode. And this basically means when you are muted and your guest is muted, but there's still stuff going on. Like, for example, in the sort of intro countdown, maybe for a live stream, something like that, where you've got background music coming. What this will do is it will lower the music when you speak so that they can hear you. It's called ducking, where one sound level goes down to allow them to, to hear the other one. Uh, what it doesn't do at the moment, though, is it doesn't work the other way. So uh, it doesn't actually lower the, the sound of the, the volume in your ears so that you can hear the guest so hopefully that might come out as an extra feature at some point in the future uh, the next section here is the uh, guest view so what do they see do they either see the broadcast or do they just see your face uh, like speaking back to them uh, I think you probably depending on what you're doing probably want them to see the broadcast so they can see what's going on and if you're doing any demos or something like that they can see what's up on the screen they can see what everyone else is seeing so that's why I've left that as, uh, as that Next one is uh, screen sharing. So uh, include desktop icons. So if you've uh, got stuff on your desk, on your desktop, can't show you on your desk <laughs> unless you've got a top-down camera, but on your desktop, then you can uh, hide those. Uh, then the next one is uh, show the desktop picture. Well, I don't actually have a desktop picture. I have a, my desktop picture is a grey background, but if I just toggle that off, uh, then in fact, I need to toggle this one off as well. There you go. It uh, hides well, now I've just hidden the interface as well, haven't I? But it hides the <laughs> the desktop picture. Uh, so if you've got a desktop picture that you don't want to see, you can toggle that one off. Next one is uh, this add margin when zooming to an app or window. So in the screen sharing mode, you can either share a whole screen or you can share a particular window, the active window. Now, if you have this one selected, add margin when zooming an entire window, which is the default, by the way, it leaves like a little border around it. And uh, that can look quite nice depending on how you're sharing the screen. But because I tend to like to have my uh, screen sharing 
although I'm not doing it here, uh, have them all sort of fitting into a precise window, then I actually turn that one off. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's personal preference if you want the nice little border around it so that you see the little sort of drop shadow and things like that around the edge. Uh, then you can leave that one uh, on. Next is optimize for better quality or higher bit rate. So, or sorry, higher frame rate. I always go for better quality because I just want the image to look better. So uh, this is specifically on screen sharing as well. If you're sharing things that are, you know, quite small text or things like that, then I'd rather it uh, have the better quality rather than the frame rate so you can actually see the uh, the picture better. Uh, next is include the mouse cursor. So you do, do you want to be able to see that on the screen? And then also you can change the uh, mouse cursor size and then also show uh, mouse clicks. Now I've got those on, but actually uh, I if this one down here is toggled on, then I tend to just use my pro mouse anyway. And so this last one, show everything when sharing the entire screen. Uh, so this shares the screen contents with no changes. Uh, this mode will include Ecamm Live in the broadcast. So I do do that because most of the time when I'm sharing my screen, uh, I'm either sharing my secondary screen that doesn't have any Ecamm Live stuff on it, or I'm sharing my main screen that does uh, have the Ecamm Live stuff on it. And the reason is I want to show Ecamm Live. So that is why I have that one uh, toggled on. So uh, that is that, and then we're nearly finished now because the next few are just some uh, little Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and YouTube uh, settings. And the first one is show the title field. So if you're going to go live on uh, Facebook from within Ecamm Live, uh, then there'll be a little button to go live, and then there will be also a uh, little thing down at the bottom corner, probably down at this corner, <laughs> that will have a, a title and a description. So this basically just toggles on and off that uh, that title field. Uh, so then uh, next is disallow embedding. So it prevents Facebook broadcast from being embedded in other sites. So I don't actually do much streaming to Facebook, to be honest with you, but uh, I don't think I would mind people embedding it in uh, their site. It's all just is extra exposure at the end of the day. Uh, the, the business page that it is assigned to is Take One Tech, but here you could just click there and it would show all of your other pages. And I've got quite a few, so I'm not going to click on that one at the moment. Uh, pages that I manage. And then uh, if depending on which page you're streaming to, uh, it can automatically cross post to other pages as well. So uh, that's all set up on Facebook side. Uh, the next one is to do with um, uh, sponsor IDs and sponsor ID for branded content posts. It's not something I'm familiar with, Johnist. And I think if you need to use that, it's something you would probably know what your sponsor ID is, but it's not something that I do personally. Uh, next with LinkedIn is just basically the nearest location. Well, in case you weren't aware, I'm in Thailand. So I have this to Southeast Asia. This is the nearest uh, location for your streaming server. So you can just click here and change the uh, the region that you're in. And finally is YouTube. Uh, by the way, YouTube categories, which one do we do? I'm not sure. How to and style. Well, I do kind of like how to guides, don't I? But then it is tech. So is it science and technology? I'm not sure. Uh, some people do entertainment. I don't know that I'm particularly entertaining. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really sure which of these to uh, go to. So I went to how to and style. I'm certainly not stylish, uh, but there's a bit of a how to about these videos, isn't there? So that is where you can select it. You obviously can select this in, video, in yeah, YouTube itself when you're uploading videos, uh, but this is just what it will default to when you're actually streaming to YouTube from within Ecamm Live itself. Stream latency. Now, this is one that uh, gets people's back up quite a lot, I think, and uh, just because they don't really understand it. Ultra low latency. Uh, so that is this is basically when you're streaming, uh, how long it's taking for it to go out to the world and for you to hear what's going out to, to come back as well. And so if you need to have comments, for example, you need to somebody posts a comment and you see it as quick as possible, then you would want ultra low latency. Uh, but that creates problems. It creates problems with uh, streaming. And uh, most people default to the low latency setting. Uh, but I'm not really that fussed. I don't I do not do things on, on my streams, uh, which are relatively infrequent compared to my videos. I stream at the moment once a week to YouTube, uh, whereas my videos are more or less daily or a couple of day. And so the, uh, the stream latency I just have as normal because I'm not like asking questions, expecting quick fire answers back. So, uh, and I think that that just gives my stream the best possible chance really. But I know some people go for ultra low latency and then they wonder why there is any lag, like as if they think it's going to be instantaneous. Well, uh, it's just not possible. So, um, uh, yeah, probably low latency is a good option uh, or if you really don't care and you don't mind about that gap, uh, slight lag between it reaching the interwebs 
and leaving your mouth, <laughs> then uh, just go with the normal. Next is, uh, is it made for kids? And uh, I've heard people say, you've got to be very careful about this one. You know, even if you're making stuff that you think is, you know, made for children, uh, it, you will go through a lot more hoops if you uh, click this. So it's only really if you are making uh, content that is specifically for children and you're absolutely sure about that. And if you are one of those people, then you would know <laughs> who you are. And that is basically the uh, the preferences. We've done it. We've gone through all of those uh, preferences. What I think I'm going to do in a separate video, because we're now at 30 minutes. I don't want to keep you too long. <laughs> I don't want to waste any more of your time today. <laughs> uh, I will do one as well where we go through all the menus, because there are a lot of things in the menus that I think people maybe aren't aware of or not necessarily aware of the implications of them so i'll do that in another video if there's anything that uh, i've mentioned in here that you uh, have any strong opinions or mild opinions or are curious about then do go ahead and leave it in the comments and while you're there then also don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and uh, yeah give me your feedback on what you think about the the preferences it's one of uh, i know it's a hot topic <laughs> anything that you are doing differently to the way i'm doing it then i'm always open to uh, suggestions and open to uh, learning as you know, I've uh, changed my ways literally on this video itself of uh, thinking of a different way, a different approach to doing things. So always looking for uh, new ideas and things like that. So that's all for this video, but do not go anywhere because as you know, there's always more great videos coming up next. So enjoy some of those and I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.